today I'm getting to see St. Paul, Minnesota for the first time. I got invited out by a nice group of folks. Now I want to point out I took a bike share from Minneapolis. This is the nice ride uh, lift. And I took it on the light rail and came all the way out here. Um, so this is going to be a slightly expensive ride. Also very exciting today is that the temperature may hit 100 degrees. So we're kind of starting early. We've got some really great recreational um, trails that kind of circle the city and um, really go to some beautiful places and where they really need some work is on the transportation side of things and better transportation infrastructure. Well, the Capital City Trail that we'll see about half of it done is, is great. Uh, Vento Trail, which we'll see the beginning of through an area called Sweet Hollow, which was kind of the original part of St. Paul, of the St. Paul Village, is also really nice. This is the final version of a box of bikeways in downtown St. Paul called the Capital City Bikeway, which we hope to have implemented in the next five years or so. And it's super nice. It's modeled after the Indianapolis Cultural Trail. The city is realizing that like painted bike lanes are not like should not be the default now. We've got a, a process going on where we're um, revising the the bicycle plan. They want protected, separated, you know, curb protected bike infrastructure to be like the default from now on. Yeah, we'll stop under this viaduct because the way they laid the block is pretty interesting. It's, it's done at a diagonal. I don't know if it's purely aesthetic or if there are structural reasons for doing this, um, but it's beautiful. The street that's crossing over is at a diagonal compared to the train, or what were the train tracks at the time. So kind of with that offset crossing, they had to, or they utilized the spiral design to get the viaduct correct for that. Hot! This street, Johnson Parkway, used to have cross streets at every block. And so you're seeing one coming up here where they closed it off. That was a political lift because, you know, some people were like, hey, my access to whatever. But then I think people started realizing that it made their street calmer and nicer to not be a through street. It kind of reminds me of Montreal when you're up on uh, Mount Royal Park and you're looking down. Look at that view. I'm getting way too much footage of light rail. I don't, I'm not doing the film on this, but I love the light rail. That's where the light rail trains live. Isn't that beautiful? Like, I wish I had an apartment building that looked that beautiful. It's a storage facility and a little bit of maintenance. The main maintenance facility is over um, by like where the blue line and the green line meet. So this is a um, historical train station. It still is the current train station, although obviously with much reduced service compared to what it used to have, um, but also is now a major bus depot as well. So um, your mega buses and um, Greyhounds and stuff, they also go here as well as a lot of the local Metro Transit buses. That's yeah. the end of our lovely ride. I'm gonna be going back here on the light rail. Take care, everybody. Thank you for a great show. We have a nice hot day in store, so if you if you can keep your keep your camera held without melting, we'll, we'll consider that a success.